Hello everyone! Today we are going to make another project. It's called a binding clamp. So what is a binding clamp? A binding clamp is the, the improvised tool that we are using you know, once we are doing book binding activities. Okay, so once you have your binding clamp with you, it will be easy to hold the pieces of paper while you are doing the process of applying the glue or trimming the paper or just simply sewing the paper so the possibilities are endless so are you now ready we will now be making our our binding book binding clamp okay so this is serene and i am your tle teacher okay To start with, we will be needing the following tools and materials. Uh, we will be using as our main material this uh, used uh, one by two wood. One by two wood. As you can see, there are some nails on it. I just removed this from our ceiling because I renovate our ceiling. Maybe I could make some vlogs later about <laughs> attaching ceilings. Uh, so there are some nails in here where we need to remove later. So the size of our wood would the of our wood should be something like to exceed the size of the band paper. So band paper would usually measure 8.5 by 11 inches if it's short and 8.5 by 13 if it's long. Okay? So the safest way is for you to at least have an allowance and not exactly cut the wood into 13 because what if uh, you will be binding larger than long size band paper. Okay, so in this case, the total length of this wood is, it's, uh, uh, siguro we will be having it 20. No, we will be cutting it into 20. So, so that we'll, we will have a lot of space here or area for us to do our binding clamp you now once we are doing our binding project so this is the wood okay, you can also use new 4s wood that are available in the market but in my case since i am also into recycling this is upcycling already since we will be using this into something more like making beautiful book binded projects so this is a very good project for you as well so for our tools, uh, other materials that we'll be needing, this one, a full threaded, full threaded bolt with washer and wing knot. You can actually choose a smaller or bigger than this, but I've chose the one for its size. Okay, so this will also correspond to our bit. Okay. So always remember the rule on making holes that the bit should be something like larger or bigger in area compared to our bolt so that our bolt can move somewhat move freely but not totally freely but just enough room for you to make some adjustments. And also a wing nut. Okay? Your life will become easier once you have your wing nut with you. So basically we will be embedding this to our wood so talking about embedding we will be using our drill bit a drill bit our 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 ever reliable uh electric drill cordless our hammer because i will be removing some nails on the wood it's very important but for some nails that are embedded that the claw of the hammer cannot reach then you will use the side cutter okay what else since we will be cutting the wood we will be cutting them exactly the same in terms of length we will be using our our cross cut saw okay Aside from that, uh, I think we will be needing some testing tools as well. You can use this one. A triangle with a guide in it. And also a tri-square if you have one. You can also use also one of my 
Innovation, which is a multi-purpose leveling and testing tool, where it has a level and is what we are after is actually the right angle here. Okay, for us to try. You know, that's the reason why it's called a tri square. So what else? Maybe your pull push rule. And of course, to have a good finish, we will be using our electric planer. Okay. So let's start making the project. Okay, so we will be preparing our stock and then I've actually placed a wood a nail at the end of this uh, piece of wood and I'm now getting ready the you know the wood by you know feeling maybe there will be some metal on it like nail so the sound of the screwdriver will basically be different and for the texture as well. So once we're good, I think we don't don't have any any hard uh, material like metal or wood. So I'm now starting to plane the wood. So as usual, we will do the the you know all the sides will be plain, including the you know from from all all areas. Of it, okay. So we will remove the old uh, layer and you could see that the wood is actually a good type of wood. No, this wood has been uh, in our ceiling for like 20 years so and it's done. We're done with the first part or the first piece. I mean this is already the second piece no? so we will now we will be setting aside first our planer so for our as not to be and for to free some space and aware um so we will be leveling or putting together the two wood trying to find the good um, areas where it will have two contacts no, of our wood okay so i will be looking for some tools that i will that will make the work more easier for me so particularly the chai square the pencil and for me to hold the pieces of wood together this is a gypsum uh, screw it measures two inches i will be using this as a temporary fastener you know, for me to be able to make the two wood uh, the two pieces of wood uh, together you know, because this will be easier for you to manage your our binding clamp once we're done with it so I will try to remove first the stopper from the table our working table or workbench you know, we are calling this as a workbench and it's a heavy duty workbench so now we will start putting the two pieces of wood together okay so uh, basically the the gypsum screw will go from one piece to the next but it seems that they have picked the wrong size now it's two and a half I, uh, I actually didn't see the label of my um, screws no? so I'll be choosing it or I will be choosing two inch uh, gypsum self drilling screw you could actually buy this also online and also in most hardware gypsum is nice no for as fastener because it's self drilling and it's uh, you don't have to usually do the pounding using the hammer okay so i will be making a pilot hole on our wood pilot hole is the first uh, hole that we will be doing with the wood so that we will not be able to so that the gypsum screw will not have a hard time trying to penetrate the entire piece of wood okay so i will be inserting the bit to our electric hand drill and and once i'm sure about that i will be 
so I will set aside this first and the uh, focus rule and other materials and tools for me to have a free table away from uh, those tools which I will not be used for now okay so I will start the pilot hole pilot hole is the first hole that we are doing with the wood and I think I will be deciding to make a hole with and then that will also be that will also serve as the hole for my bolt later of the binding clamp book binding clamp so let's start the pilot hole or drill to our binding book binding clamp so all throughout make sure also that you are not hitting the table so let's try to measure from the hole uh, 16 inches 16 inches so once we're done with that we will try to make a marking on the wood okay so I didn't mark I just estimate you know, from the point where I point 16 inches and we'll start drilling okay so the same thing with what I did with the first hole so I will now remove the the bit the electric bit so I will be replacing it with a Phillips screw driver pad that will be placed on my on my hand drill now this is cordless meaning it's really convenient to use uh, you can also buy this online you know, the, the electric drill when it becomes my partner every time that I have a project so I will be putting out the gypsum screw on the wood so do it and now securely using your other hand now so it will not go somewhere else so it's done and then we will proceed with the second uh, driving of screws the Egyptian screw so using the pilot hole we made earlier so that will become easy for our gypsum wood or screw to penetrate the wood okay so just like this so it's really convenient once you are using a a cordless hand trick. So the two pieces of wood are already secured, but the edge where it's very important in book binding is not yet straight or flat. So I will be setting aside this first. Okay, so the table is quite messy. So in doing this, we will be using again our nails that I have removed earlier because and the hammer which I have placed back to its original place. I will be straightening also the nails so that we will be able to save our materials. So just a few pounding will really fix or straighten the nails. So I will be placing the nail here because this will serve as the stopper. So that our our work or, or the stack of wood that we or the our project will not go somewhere else no or we'll be having a hard time stopping the wood from moving while we are doing the planing activity okay after which uh, you have to make sure that all the sides <coughs> excuse are are level using our planer so our planer is really our partner if we really wanted to establish a flat and level well just like this no? a closer look so you could really see that it's already level so this really makes our work easier and faster because of the power tools that we are using it's really good to invest with good quality power tools because this will be our extra fun while doing your work okay so we will now proceed to the next step where we will be identifying the size of our binding clock so from the from the part where we bore a hole or place our gypsum screw or the screw we will be measuring two inches on one side and another two inches on the other side okay so i just do make use of my pencil to do the marking 
and by that we will use the chi square to be able to establish the right angle it's really important now, once we have already the chi square we will be transferring it to the other side of our work okay we're doing it in the other side as well and the other side okay so we have already completed all the markings for each uh, edges of our book binding so we will now remove our hammer so it's quite hard you can use a stock not to remove the nail no, this, it's something that we've learned during our elementary years oh so the, there is it we have removed the nail already so make sure always that you are making your work table free from any uh, thing that will distract you or will affect the quality of your work so we will be using this this device that we have, we're using during our college years uh, it's like a stopper you know? the principle is very simple uh, it's just made of plywood and two pieces of one by two so the other part of it will connect or attach to the edge of the table while the other one will serve as a as a stopper so that you will be able to cut the wood uh, freely and and no need for you to, to have the extra effort of stopping the wood from um, or losing while you are doing the cutting <coughs> so in here um, I'm actually looking for for something that will make my work more faster and more efficient so again uh, this is our triangles and our saw because uh, we will not be cutting so using my invention you can also use this to you know to level and to mark your project and so if you have some um, if you want to uh, ask something about the project just uh, leave a message on the comment below so we will now be cutting the piece and I'm not into two inches let's change the allowance you know, from each edge of our binding clock you know, I make it one and a half instead of two inches you know, so it's already one and a half inch okay so let's do or you can use my my leveling and uh, measuring tool okay so make the marking very legible so that you will not be having a hard time uh, locating the lines no for you to cut the way okay so my tool or this the apparatus that I have made is really good once we are doing the uh, squaring the stock you know, or our or our project you know, so we we're, we're doing it on the two sides or faces of our wood so that it will be easy for us to cut our tool. since we're done with it we will be placing it back to its original place okay so also this so this is how the device working the ones we need during college uh, something like a stopper okay so as you can see i actually repeat the saw uh the technique is for you to make some incision first or the cutting first with the first uh one edge of it and then trying to um, do it on the other side so that will really give you a very clear marking on which part are you doing so I think I'm gonna have transfer to the edge of the table because it's hard for me to cut because the, some of the blades of the cross cut so are actually touching the table so let's try to re-angle our camera for you to be able to see the project okay so I think we're good let's go back again to our work this is so important without a cameraman okay so in here um 
there's some wood also stopping me from cutting. So let's just adjust you know, somewhere outside. So I'll be moving the wood. Okay, so the technique is simple, no? just a few strokes first on one side and then do it. On the other side, then you will really have uh, a technique no, where you could cut the wood. So, so we will now be sewing the exist part of our book binding clump. As you can see, uh, I'm using the, the lines we did earlier. Uh, doing a short incision or cut first. Then turning it to the other side. This will give me a clear uh, guide to keep on sewing. So just do the usual sewing. Making sure that uh, we are uh, having it on a right angle. Okay. So keep on sewing and sewing. Cutting the wood until uh, it's done. Okay, so we're done. So the next step that we, we will be doing is for me to, to look for for my drill and uh, we will be removing now the gypsum screw okay so but before that uh, we will be sanding first some of the row edges of our work uh, because this will be you know this could be not too nice to hold if there are some rough or sharp edges in it so I try to eliminate it using this sandpaper it's just medium um, grit of sandpaper and just for me to to at least have the preliminary finishing touches of our wooden uh, book binding clump okay so this is just a simple step anyway and the way i do it i just uh, feel rough edges of the of the wood and then I'm trying to eliminate that just uh, passing sanding just to improve the texture of our book binding clamp okay so I think we're done I will now be removing the block you know, the stopper uh, putting it back to its proper place the block is so useful in cutting the wood so that it will not wobble this time, I will try to remove the 2-inch uh, gypsum screw using my hand drill. It's really convenient if you have this power tool. Much more, it's cordless and it's very powerful. So, I have already removed the, the gypsum screw. Right now, uh, we will try to create a hole on the... And the wood. So okay, the so the place where we the retrieve or remove the gypsum screw will also be the place the where we'll be placing the the ball. Okay, so I've also removed the, the other side of our wood. Okay, so maybe we'll be return it uh, for now because. It would be hard for us to get the correct position of the of the boring process if we will remove entirely all the two pieces of gypsum. So I actually return the other side. So now we will do the boring process. So in doing that, we have to make sure that the size of our bolt and our bit is I uh, know the, the bit should be bigger compared to the size so the gyps uh, I mean the bolt measures one fourth so yeah it's with so I'm using the the three eight uh, drill electric drill bit I mean uh, drill bit okay. so I'm actually cutting at the edge of the table so it will not be able to damage the surface of the table okay so it's done we have already successfully created 
a hole from top to bottom. In this time, I'm do, doing the sanding process, removing all the frayed uh, wood traces of our drilling process. So, the next step is for us to 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 create a sink you know, so that the head of the bolt will this will be the place where the the head of the bolt will I know, will lie so using our cutter we will remove some part of the other side of the wood so that the the bolt will fit snugly to the to this part of our project okay so right now we will be placing now the bolt we will remove the wing nut including the washer in the washer so insert the there you go you have already placed the bolt inside and then i'm doing some hammering so that the head of the bolt will entirely be embedded uh, smoothly to the right now I will be removing the other side removing the gypsum screw so again using our electric drill we'll be able to retrieve or remove the gypsum wood screw right now uh, I will be changing the bit from a screwdriver head to an electric drill bit or just a drill bit and again the measure of the drill bit it's one fourth of an inch. I mean, it's three eight. No, <laughs> it's bigger than. It should be bigger than our our bolt, so that it will be easy for us to use our mining clamp. So right now, I'm doing the the boring process. Boring meaning we create bores. I mean, <laughs> not bores, but holes, not to our work. Okay. So, and make sure that also that you're not hitting the surface of your working table. Now, I will be doing the same process I did earlier where I uh, removed some part of the uh, holes we created using our cutter. Okay. So, after I made a, a counter sink or you know a place for the head we will be inserting now the wing knot the washer and the wing knot in one part of the binding crew so you see uh, it's easy if it's a wing knot because you just have to use the its wings okay to lock the bolt okay, so we're going to be removing again that now the wing knot and the washer <coughs> And insert the and the same thing. Uh, I drive using the hammer, placing the wing nut and the washer. So this basically completes the the wood the wooden book binding clamp. So right now I'm trying to to place the wing nut below or near the wood okay so it's done so you can actually use the binding clamp now by you know doing your uh, project so thank you very much and have a good evening or a good day to everyone see you again bye bye